What's going on? Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Best Damn Wrestling Podcast. We're coming to you all the way from Wrestling Valhalla, as usual, where we're unfiltered, unedited, uncompromising hosts, Sherrod, and my best friend and cohort, Mad Genius and yours, the ranting, raving, undisputed, world's most dangerous wrestling co-host, Keith. Oh, yeah, definitely. Sharp Man. talking. Have you ever have you ever broken down what wrestling Valhalla is for people who who may not know? Well, wrestling Valhalla is basically Valhalla is a form of 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 a warrior's paradise. It's like a Norse mythology thing, but at the same time, it's it's where it's where the greats go. And getting to talk about wrestling is almost like heaven on earth, and doing it for fun. So hey, man. It, you know, it, I, that's the way I look at it. Uh, I don't know about you, but getting to do this all the time is really cool. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Man, Um, before we get started, I'm going to give a massive shout out to the important people in our very busy wrestling lives right now. Yes. Actually putting up with this. So, yes. I know. Yeah, it's been kind of tough because, man, since we got started, we've been going. Like, I, yeah, the grind is real. No days off. It's crazy. I don't even remember what today it is. <laughs> I don't I, remember what day it is. I think <laughs> Saturday. I mean, it's supposed I, to be Saturday. Yeah, it's yeah. Saturday. I, I know. I know. Like, hell, you've done three episodes or something like that today. Is it three? Well, this will be the third. Yeah, yeah, this will be the third. Yeah, I've done two. I mean, we've just been everywhere. I, Jesus Christ. But, I mean, we're getting an enjoyment out of it. It's not like, you know, we don't like talking wrestling. Yeah. We we do this. So, I just wanted to give that. I mean, if you're listening, we love you. Thank you for allowing us to do what we do. Now, um, let's jump in real quick. It's going to be a fairly brief episode for us but hell it's gonna be something that we felt we need to talk about we're gonna review the uh the uh goddamn uh tournament yeah yeah and shout out shout out to uh i was just on a live podcast for everybody out there uh live reaction podcast with foul original and dj storms and ruthless aggression podcast had a blast great minds it was just a hell of a time. Check that out on YouTube whenever it comes up. It should be up in a little bit. Yeah, if you missed out on that, um, I mean, you missed a treat. There were four different podcasts on air live talking about the World's Collide Tournament. Sorry about that. Man, I had a brain for it. I'm no, no, it's cool. It's cool. I, I got it. I the fucking World Cup, and I had to stop <laughs> because I was like, I will never mention that shit again. So I have to go and be like, wait, that's not what the fuck it's called, you know? But I mean, man, overall, I'm I'm very, very, very pleased with the um the way it, it, it all went down and how you got a chance to represent our podcast and talk about this. And we're gonna get put obviously put our spin on it. And I know you maybe have a couple more ideas than I do from being in that round table. And like you said, shout out to Foul Original for giving us an opportunity. Much appreciated with us being new. Um but Let's jump right in. We'll try to go in order, talk about the stuff, and go from there. How about it? Yeah, let's go. All right. Um. So, for anyone who may not know what Worlds Collide was, we'll just kind of give a brief synopsis. Synopsis. Sorry. Um. It's basically, I guess, for lack of better words, a. Would you say World Cup is that acceptable? Uh, not necessarily World Cup. I say kind of like a Inter- atomic Inter- battle royale. <laughs> well, in a promotional tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Bas- so yeah. Per- it's, a, it's basically an interpromotional tournament from three of WWE's uh, promotions outside of Raw and SmackDown. It was uh, 205 Live, NXT, and NXT UK with. I believe it was three representatives or four representatives each. Uh, I think it was supposed to be five each. 
Either way, it's I think it's somewhere between three and five representatives. Yeah, it's five. Yeah, it was five. I don't remember uh, again. We, maybe we'll figure it out as we go. But hell, I don't remember the exact number, but I do remember the matches, and that's what we're covering. So forgive me for being off. I mean, again, we've been working all day, so we're kind of fuzzy. So just you know. But anyway, um, the first match that came on was uh, Drew Gulak from Two Hundred Five Live. Hope I didn't butcher his name and uh, Mark Andrews, who was from NXT UK, and that was probably the most technical match I think we saw in that entire tournament. Was it not? Yeah, great technical wrestling, but you know, we didn't tune in to see technical wrestling. You know, we came to see some good high spots. We came to see some some good storytelling. That that was just a bunch of mat wrestling. And stuff like that. I mean, it was great technical wrestling, great technical stuff. It's just ah, business didn't pick up in that one for me. But let me ask you this: Is it fair to say that like these were two promotions that were very? Th- this is common for them. I mean, you had Gulak from Two Hundred Five, and they do a lot of technical wrestling. I mean, you have guys there that are high flyers and stuff, but those guys are pretty technical. And NXT UK is known. At least to me, yeah. hard hits and technical wrestling. Like they're very by the book, you know? So yeah. that seemed like it was par for the course. I'm not going to lie. I didn't really care too much for it. I know we were texting mm-hmm. while we were, uh, it was kind of slow. Very. Yeah, that's what I was meaning by business didn't pick up with it because it was just like, okay, who gets the upper hand? Okay, it was just like a bunch of technical wrestling, then the finish, and there you go. I'm like, whoa, what? What just happened? <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's 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 I don't I don't know. Like it has some hard hits in there that kind of made me cringe and again that's consistent with NXT UK, you know. Yeah. I, I thought Mark Andrews was nice. That was actually and I'm not afraid to say it, that was kind of my first time seeing both of these guys. And I think I might say it a few times throughout this tournament for some people. Um, so it was a little, cause I'm, I'm not a big 205 live guy. I think that promotion is, it's just, it's slowly fading into inconsistency. It's not what it was after the cruiserweight classic. Is that just me? No, I don't think it's just you, but at the same time, it's also, um, you know, how it's treated, how it's booked, how it's advertised. Like no one really puts any effort into 205 in the uh, management side of WWE, I feel. Well, I mean, you know, looking at, at, at 205, I only know a few people. You know, there's Buddy Murphy, who is pretty much the face of that yes. brand, him and Cedric Alexander. But after that, you have Lucha House Party, Kalisto, who's in Lucha House Party, if I'm not mistaken, is who mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. Um, there was Itami, but he's gone now. Yeah. I mean, but it, they don't, it's it's not really, I'm not overly impressed with them. You know, it's just like, uh, yeah, I, I mean, they, those, it's like four or five guys and that's it. And I, I just, I think they need to either refresh that promotion or maybe they need to just say, okay, look, this isn't working and maybe do away with it again. Yeah. I think they should probably do away with it. If they're not going to do it right, then don't do it at all. No, no, exactly. Exactly. Um, but yeah, overall I gave that match a, a, a B. I mean, it was very technical, very wrestling oriented. And it, you know, like you said, it didn't have the high spots and it was a little slow, but I did enjoy seeing the grapples and reversals and stuff like that. It, it wasn't bad, but I'm like you, I expected for this tournament to be like just over the top like every match is boom 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 like it's just a one up is you know yeah um the next match after that was uh i believe it was keith lee and travis banks and again keith lee's from nxt and travis banks is from nxt uk um i like travis banks Actually, shout out to him. He liked one of our tweets during the uh, live tweet we were doing while we were watching this match. Um, 
I kind of wanted Travis Banks to win this match. I think the high spots and stuff you were looking for, you might have got out of him. But Keith Lee looked pretty good, and I know he's very over. I'm not overly familiar with him um, as far as, like, what he did prior to NXT. I know in NXT he had a couple matches with uh, Cassius Ono and other um, what did you think of Keith Lee? I like him. I like him. I like how he can work with the smaller guys because that's what he has to do. You know, I, I've seen him wrestle with Lars Sullivan. That was a good program. Just, of course, I saw the catches on though. That was also good. I mean, he, he looks he, he looked good in it. I mean, at first I was thinking, I was like, Keith Lee, he's kind of displaced in this. You know, why why is right. a big man in this in this tournament? You and know, he was but, a big man, I think. Yeah, he, he was he was uh, it was him and uh that dude Dominic whatever the fuck his last name is. I don't give a damn. But, yeah. <laughs> them two. Dajakovich. Dajakovich. Yeah. bitch. Yeah. But, I yeah, Keith Lee was great. Big man though. He moved pretty well. And we're gonna get to his match here in a little bit, but um he uh, Keith Lee, yeah, uh, he seemed kind of out of place. And again, I, I was really hoping Travis Banks was would have got that win. I think I would have liked to see him a lot longer. But overall, that match was pretty good. It picked up a lot better than what the first match did. And you know, it wasn't bad. But again, I would have. I'm a huge Travis uh, Banks fan. I'm liking what I'm seeing from him so far. And, uh, NXT UK, and I think that we need to see more of him. I think he's going to be a star very soon. It, it, well, he's a star now in UK, but I'm saying on the main roster in some capacity, he should be a star. I like his persona. I like his entrance. He He's awesome. So, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, overall, that match was pretty good. I gave it a B plus. Um, again, it, it was a lot quicker, a lot faster than uh, Keith Lee. At um, times, at times it seemed like a, a squash match, but it actually worked out. Right, it did, and I was gonna say it had a very like, let's get Keith worked Lee out. Over feel. Hmm? It had a very let's get Keith Lee over feel. Was that just me? No, I think that was the point to get Keith Lee over because you know he's new to NXT and trying to get people more familiar with them and stuff like that. Right. So, you know, they're pulling out every avenue that they can. But yeah, like I was saying, just it, it was better than the Gulak Andrews match that happened before this, and Keith Lee moved on. Um, the next match I I think was the best match of the first round to me. I think I texted you that Adam Cole and Shane Thorne. Uh, Adam Cole, of course, is a uh, leader of Undisputed Era in NXT. Shane Thorne is uh from NXT as well. Um, yes, this match I need to see good. again. I need yeah. to see this again on the takeover. Yeah. I need yep. to see it. I just it, have to. It, it had ring psychology to it with Adam Cole in his shoulder. It had high spots. I mean, anybody Adam Cole works with, they look good. But he, this match, like, I, 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 it almost felt like a takeover match. It was fast paced. It had good high spots. It had low spots. It didn't get great drama. Feel. Yeah, exactly. Like you, great you kickouts. Like you felt like that match could go either way. It was yeah. like, hey, like it's going to be Adam Cole. No, it's going to be Shane Thorne. No, Adam Cole, Shane Thorne. Shane. And you finally got it at the very end, and it looked like it took everything Cole had to win the damn thing. But, hell, it was pretty goddamn good. I mean, that's, to me, again, that's one of the best matches of the night. I gave it an A. Yeah, definitely same here. One of the matches of the night, definitely. Uh, yeah, and we went from that to Dominic Dajakovic from NXT versus TJP from 205 Live. TJP gave him a hell of a fight, but I mean, I I kind of can look at that and say, hell, I don't I don't think there's no fucking way they would put TJP over Dajakovic. It would have been nice to have an upset in there somewhere to me. So like yeah. I, that that would have been a good way to kind of add some enhancement to the tournament, but uh, TJP impressed me. Like, I, I did you see that arm bar hole like in the high? Yeah, part? yeah, that was kind of awesome. I, I I liked it. He he was able to keep keep the pace high, but still 
Dijakovic was able to showcase strength and all of that uh, throughout the course of the match. And, I mean, like you said, he, to me, he's not a super big man, but you can classify him as one. He he looked really good. Yeah, um, to me, um, Dijakovic, I think the whole point was to get him over because they've been giving him squash matches over the past couple of weeks on NXT. Right. So they didn't want to squash TJP. They wanted actually him to actually have a fight with him. So I mean, you get it. You get it both accomplished. You get Dajakovic over. You don't bury TJP. You know. So I, I think they proved their point with that they they accomplished the goal they set out to to make this without. one of the matches where nobody looked bad. You know, to me. You know, TJP yeah. got a got a rub from hanging with a big guy that he shouldn't have hung as long as he did with, and damn near he almost came close. Well, and I think I think you're having technical difficulties. I think your mic is cutting on and off. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Sorry about that. That was me. Um, yeah, that, I'm sorry, folks. I got a new mic trying to adjust. Um, I, TJP looked good from the standpoint of him being able to have a, 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 a very good match with somebody that he almost beat and that he shouldn't have. So he got that rub from that. And Dodger Kovic got a rub from having – something that, like you said, wasn't a squash match, you know? Yeah. He, yeah. He, this was one that he actually had to do some work in, and I think that benefited both parties. I, I liked it. Um, I, I I said a B plus. It, it was I like cool. his finisher, that feast your eyes. I like that finisher. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, he, he could be a future star. I, I think he's kind of like – Do you, I get a Lars Sullivan type feel from him. Um, maybe that's just me, but – that's I think that's just you. <laughs> well, when I mean, when I say Lars Sullivan, like from the standpoint of like a big guy, like you, you oh, know, how they're billing him, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I get in terms of that, yeah. Um, the next match was my favorite. Uh, Tyler Bate from NXT UK, who's a one half of Mustache Mountain, and Cedric Alexander from Two Hundred Five Live. Um. This half spots were it, this was fast. Yes, like, yeah, this was fast, and it had some spots where it was just like, what the fuck? Like that, I don't know what the fuck I witnessed when Cedric Alexander threw bait against the ropes and that fucking flip splash or whatever. It was a Spanish fly. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. I, I I seen that and I'm like. Uh, I, I mean that that had a little bit of everything to me. I, I'm a huge Tyler Bate fan. Uh, Cedric Alexander is again, probably the second best or first best, depending on who you ask, person in 205 Live. I'm surprised they didn't let anybody from 205 Live win a single match. That really surprised me. Yeah, I didn't even know that until you just said it. Well, no, no uh, from 205 won. A actually, match. they say. Uh, Umberto Carrillo, he's he's from two hundred five live. They say, but I'm I never seen him on there. Yeah, he's brand new though. Yeah, I'm very, talking about yeah. these other guys have been there. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought at least Cedric Alexander, considering his standing in two hundred five live, he didn't even get to the second round. That surprised me. It it made it almost made two hundred five live look like an irrelevant brand because the only person that got to the next round was a for all intents and purposes, a, a guy that nobody really has a lot of, 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 they don't have a lot to go off of with him. Well, it's kind of like what we were just saying. 205 Live, they show no love to it. I mean, they record the damn show after SmackDown. Who who wants to stick around for another hour and watch another show, a whole other show? The energy is going to be dead. Nobody's going to be into it. People are going to leave. Like, yeah. Why do that? Right. It doesn't make sense. Hey, you know? side, side note. Uh, do you know who was commentating the tournament? Because I don't. It it was Byron Saxton, and I want to say, oh, what was this dude, Vic Joseph? I never and heard the, of him. I didn't understand why. I would have loved to have seen Mauro Ronaldo and fucking Michael Cole. Yeah, I don't think they cared about it too much like that in terms of uh, showcase young. New talent and 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 the brand you want your best out there, you know. Yeah. 
And I think them two together, first off, they would have been a dream of mine because Michael Cole is probably the best announcer WWE has now that there's no JR or Jerry the King Lawler. So, and Mauro Ronaldo is better than everybody right now. Yes. So my favorite, I, my favorite team, my favorite commentating team in WWE is the NXT. Team. Yeah, NXT is 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 very good. NXT UK isn't bad either, but man, Mauro Ronaldo is literally is the best wrestling commentator in the world today to me. Yeah. But overall, that match was good. Uh, I I, I would have liked more matches like that. I mean, and uh, Tyler uh, Tyler Bate has like a dope finishing name. The Tyler Driver 97. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I was just, I'm just glad he was able to, you know, use this tournament to showcase himself to people who may not be familiar with him, because it's kind of hard to do that in a tag team, you know. Mustache Mountain is over, so. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that. They, them, them guys are talented. I, 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 I think they need to be looked at very closely because they might not be down there too long. Um. Then, of course, you had Velveteen Dream, who is one of the premier talents in NXT, and Tony Nese from 205 Live in the next match. I, I'm not going to lie. From the time this match started, I was like, yeah, it, it seemed like every match that Velveteen Dream was in for me, I, and I live tweeted this, I think, twice. I'm like, this is a formality. Let's move on. We know who's going over. They tried to, and, and what pisses me off, they tried to make it look like it was going to be a close match, but Dream is so much better than almost everybody else he faced. Is, is, is that just me? Um, no, no, it's not just you. It's definitely not just you. Like I, like I was telling the guys earlier that I was talking to, I feel like the whole point of this tournament was to get certain people over to get them more attention. If Velveteen Dream, this was his tournament. This is this was tailored for him, well, you know, I, to put him in that spot. I tweeted this. Do you think that the reason him and Cole didn't do takeover was because of this tournament? That this was your plan the whole time? Hey, we're gonna make you look really dominant in this tournament. I think so. I believe so. And I think Adam Cole was added to it to give it a a a, a, a I, and not just Adam Cole, uh, uh, Devlin. Uh, Tyler Bate and um, uh, 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 Banks were added to it because they were giving it a sense of relevance in a way. Yeah. But you take all of those guys off, you don't really have a lot to work with. No, you really don't. You really don't. I definitely believe Adam Cole was put there as a sweetener, you know, oh. so much. To, to really make it relevant, to drive views, to, you know, get more attention on it. And it right. worked. Yeah, no, it, it did. It did. I mean, you you seen a lot of people tuning into it. I did like the concept. They, they're trying to be creative right now, and I liked it. So the first part of the, uh, the, the tournament was live stream. And the second part was on the network. So you got eyes yeah. on the product outside of network subscribers, and then you got your subscribers. So that was genius. I, I tweeted this, too. I'm like, do you think Triple H had his hands all over this? Because this smells like him. It's different. Yeah. It's innovative. It's something they've never done before. I, I mean, fuck. It, I, I couldn't expect Vince McMahon to do some shit like this. Hell, fuck no. About Especially yeah, you're talking about a tournament that showcases guys that are not on the main roster. Because we've seen the World Cup for WWE, and that was a joke. That was a piece of crap. I don't know what the hell. I, like, man, let's don't get me started on my rant. No, well, get hey, me started on my rant. Check this out. Do you think they're kind of taking from what NJPW does with the with the tournaments and stuff? Uh, it's because uh, WWE didn't used to do this. The closest thing you saw was King of the Ring. Yeah. But now they're doing the World Cup, the May Young Classic. They did the Cruiserweight Classic, the World's Collide Tournament, the fucking Dusty Rose Invitational. Like the and 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 most of these tournaments are really good and they make stars. They did not used to do that. That seems something. That seems like the page out of New Japan's book to me. 
No, it, it New Japan and uh, AAA in Mexico because AAA has a, a tournament called When Worlds Collide. I believe it's oh, a tournament. Right. Oh, okay. yeah. So WWE just made a little variation of the name and took it for their own. But yeah, the whole tournament thing definitely comes from Triple H's team. I have faith in that team. That's a that's a great damn team he's building over there. You know, if he keeps that group together and then he keeps adding to it, you know, you keep on getting that that team sharp like that. It, I mean, sky's the limit. I mean, tournaments usually don't work this well. Just no, out don't. the gate like this, like the May Young Classic, the Cruiserweight Classic, the UK tournament, like. That stuff usually doesn't work well, but they've mastered the art of tournaments and it, they made it relevant again. It's just great. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, this was different. It was very different in a lot of ways. I, we, I know in our lifetime, never have seen anything like this. So it, it, in, in WWE, at least, again, the only thing we ever saw as far as tournaments was the uh, King of the Ring tournament. Now, of course, there was that tournament for the undisputed title, but they didn't have the same feel as something like this. This looked like they were really trying to showcase other guys. In the process, yeah. we, it also was a really, to me, a run-through tool for Velveteen Dream. Um, but at the same time, I kind of enjoyed it being different. It was very different than seeing the same old, same old, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, the next match was uh, Humberto Carrillo from 205 Live, and I probably butchered his fucking name on Twitter. I do apologize. I think I called him Carlos Carrillo. <laughs> oh, wow. You completely yeah, named I don't really know. We don't <laughs> know the fucking guy. Yeah, know? I didn't know. I'm like, who the fuck is this? Yeah, and, and he went against Zach Gibson from uh, NXT UK. And again, I'm UK had guys that are very good in Travis Banks, mm -hmm. Devlin, mm -hmm. Zach Gibson, and Tyler Bate. Like, yes. I'm really surprised. You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, it could have, they could have just as easily let one of those guys won the damn thing. And I guess that maybe wasn't the point, but these, all of these guys are extremely talented and from UK. You, again, UK is something to keep an eye on. I, I think in short order, they're going to be on par with NHT. I, I think there won't be a, a, a difference in, in the quality of the product really soon. Um, but I was surprised that Gibson lost this match. I really was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I was very surprised because I didn't think that they were going to let Carrillo go over. Right, considering he's new. Yeah, I, I thought they were going to at least let Zach Gibson go to the second round. I, I didn't expect him to win because he's in the tag team, and he's already a tag team champion, so he's right. a tag team champion. can't go out that title. So, well, so but It still doesn't matter. The, the, the guy was new. I, I That's the one match I really had an issue with. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, it, it, okay, it gives the guy, it gives Carrillo some credence because you just beat a real legitimate guy. But at the same fucking time, you got this tag team that now is supposed to be the shit. And yeah. one and half of that just lost to a fucking cruiserweight. I don't Yeah, get, first round. Yeah, in the first round. Not a, and it was. You know, and it was uh, and that was the upset. You know, I said, "Hey, this tournament would be fun with an upset." That was that version of that. You know, but uh, fuck, I, I don't. Okay, whatever. I digress. Well, I'm not gonna rant this episode. Uh, that's not. That's not what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> that was it for the first round, and then you moved into the quarterfinal matches. Um, Adam Cole versus Keith Lee. Both guys from NXT. Adam Cole came up with the win. Um, ooh, this one. I like I, how they worked this one. I, I know it, it looked really good. I, I don't. I don't. It, it wasn't like overly great. It's not like seeing Adam Cole and Ricochet or Adam Cole and Gargano or anybody else. But it still was good, and I think that speaks to how good Adam Cole is because he did a good job of making Keith Lee look great, but he also did a good job. Of you know, he he did his thing in the same process. Again, this is another match. Nobody comes out of this thing looking bad. Yeah, yeah, nobody came out looking bad in that match. 
It was just great. I, I like how he picked the limb. He worked on it. Yeah. You know, I yeah, like that it took did. him multiple uh, super kicks and and uh, knee. I like how he really had to work to get that win to put Keith Lee down. So I, I really like that one. I liked I'm it. I'm not going to lie. Coming out of that match, I was like, Adam Cole should is probably going to win. This would be what propels him into the NXT championship uh, uh, contendership and would probably start the whole NXT gets all the gold. You know, I was like, hey, this could be it. I've been saying Adam Cole needs to be in the NXT championship picture. This is his way in. He's yeah. probably in the fucking thing. You know, that was me. Yeah, no, this is definitely his way in. I mean, what, what, what else do they want him to do? I mean, to me, I can't say anything like, oh, the Undisputed Era is holding him back. Because, you know, he, you get to see his style. You get to see what he does in that square circle on a daily basis, nightly basis. And, you know, it just takes them booking him the right way. Right, right. Put him with the right people. Yeah. I, I think this year should be the year he's NXT champion at some point. I, I, I really do. Um, after that match, there was uh, Tyler Bate versus uh, Dominique Dijakovic. Um, I like this match. I really did. It had a lot of hard hits, which, again, is consistent with UK. It, to me, UK is more of a strong style promotion. I mean, you see a lot of hard hitting and uh, or whatnot. Um, I'm I'm freaking sure. <laughs> yeah, this, this was brutal. Like I I can't even find the words. Like it it was. Dajakovic is like a really physical guy, you know. As far yeah. as like, but yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying about the Lars Sullivan aspect of it. You know, like he just has that persona, that monster persona uh, on him, and. He's not as big as Lars Sullivan was, but it's just a demeanor, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I completely agree. And again, Tyler Driver, 97. I, that, that, that'll that never get over me. Yeah, I'm like, how do you, what's the thinking process behind a, a name for a move like that? A name behind a... That's a, a great... That's <laughs> like... Yeah, that double underhook <laughs> to sit down, powerbomb. Yeah, that, that that's that's great. Again, though, Mustache Mountain is good. Both of them are good separately, but to get in, but together, I mean, and separately they look good. Uh, they're they're just good all the way yeah. around. Yeah. Um, we had Dream and Humberto Carrillo again. As soon as this match started, I was like, uh, yeah, this yeah, is you knew what was gonna happen. Not gonna last long. I I just. It was a it was a formality again. It, I, it seemed yeah. like Green just had that most of the night. Where it's like, uh, there's no fucking way. It they they ruined whatever they got going with him. There's no way. The, the only person I would have even been comfortable with him losing to at this stage because of where he's at is Adam Cole. Because yeah. it would it wouldn't have been such a bad thing, you know. I mean, but yeah, I, I that match I looked at it and it was just like, okay, yeah, we it was that. there. Yeah, it was there. It, it was there, and I think that was the point up until the end. Hey, since we're getting him over, so you mm-hmm. know. Um, and then after that, you had uh, Jordan Devlin who beat uh, Drew Gulak from Two Hundred Five Live. Um, Devlin was had a buy, which I thought was cool because mm-hmm. you know. So again, they're very creative. I thought that was cool. I. I do not like Jordan Devlin. I thought, as, as far as his character, but overall his work is very good. Yeah, I, I like Jordan Devlin. I mean, he got trained by Finn Balor. One of the as, best. Uh, yeah. Yes, definitely one of the best. I, he even looks like Finn Balor, kind of like like a clone or something. Right. <laughs> right. I like his physicality. To be a, a little dude, I like his, his physicality. Well, you I, know, I actually like him. There's a feud in UK between him and Travis uh, Tra- Travis Banks. Oh yeah, yeah, because he's the one who attacked Travis Bank before the, uh, a takeover. The dude at a takeover. That was yeah. that was kind of yeah. It, they're they're doing some stuff. Um, 
after that match, of course, you had the semifinals, and it was uh, Tyler Bate and Adam Cole. Um, that match, I, yeah. I was surprised they let Tyler Bate beat him. Well, I was kind of surprised, too, because, again, he's a part of a tag team. A huge tag team in NXT UK. Hey. I didn't think they was going to let them progress that far in it. And again, I mean, uh, Tyler Driver 97 won the damn match. Isn't that crazy? That, Every, that's, wow. They I didn't think that would be the one to Tyler put Bate the giant down. I, I didn't. They did a good job of making Tyler Bate look for real, but I didn't understand. Like why? I, I I don't know. I I, I didn't understand. <laughs> I that really surprised me. I I didn't understand the Adam Cole thing. That shocked the fuck out of me. To me, that was almost the equivalent of an upset. But again, Tyler Bates so good. Can you really call it that? Yeah, I mean, with the whole Tyler Bate match with Adam Cole in the next round. I mean, you know, that's an either way match. Like you're happy if either one wins because they put on a hell of a match, man. They put on a hell of a match. No, yeah, they did. They did. And it's crazy because every match that fucking Adam Cole had was a hell of a match. Yeah. Let me yeah. let me ask you this. Do you think that this was a little bit taxing on everybody? Because, man, they were wrestling these matches like boom, 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 boom. So you go in, you do your match, you win, you get a, mo- a match's rest. And most of these matches went, what, maybe 10 to ten to 15 minutes, most of them? No- nothing was shorter than maybe 10 minutes. And then you're right back out there and you're doing another match. This was a gauntlet. And I, I think, I'm wondering if yeah. it actually took a toll on people as it went along. I, I, I don't know if I, would, if I liked that. Oh, that's a good question. If it took a toll on people throughout the course of it. I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, they filmed this over the course of two days. So that gives the the crowd a chance to, you know, re-energize. Right. But, I mean, I can't can't say that I'm disappointed in what they did or how uh, how they planned out the brackets because... We got two semifinal matches that, that were actually great on both sides. No, you did. I mean, because the next one was Velveteen Dream and Jordan Devlin. And I thought this one had good psychology by Devlin with the whole targeting of Dream's ribs and how he set it up. You actually thought Dream was about to lose this fucking thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it was a good suspense because I'm like, okay. Well, maybe they're going to try to leave it with just two NXT UK guys to get the promotion over. But, hey, they they gave it to Velveteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, hell, Purple Rainmaker. Hell, yeah. That's a great elbow drop right there. But the semifinals, I wasn't disappointed at all. Both matches to me. No, no. that too high, I, I, I would A's both, uh, both matches for me. Both. Yeah, no, I, two great matches. And hell, the final was just as good. You had Dream and Tyler Bate. And I mean, yeah. Yeah. They were having fun. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 again, still the same thing. Had great psychology, had some high spots to it or whatnot. And I mean, Hell, the, uh, yeah. He, I couldn't believe he tried to top rope Tyler Driver. Yeah, yeah, the, I like that part. I I love that part because you don't see that a lot. You don't see a lot of people still in their opponent's finisher. You don't see that a lot, right? You know, so it's just the little things that I appreciate. Like going, kind of going back to that Adam Cole Tyler Bate uh, match. Adam Cole did a, a step up insecurity. Off the like he and he was on the floor and Tyler Bay was in the ring. Who does insecurity while they're standing outside the ring? That just little yeah. stuff like that. That's yeah. great. You could tell like the talent started to show in the semifinals. You was like, okay, fuck. Now it's finally starting. To make, you know, it, it, at first it was I, 
Because I'm not going to lie, when I watched the first couple, I was like, oh, God, like, this is just, uh, I like yeah. the concept. But by the semifinals, you're like, fuck me. Like, this this is great, you know? And yeah, then, yeah. And disappoint. It wasn't a squash match. It, it, it actually looked legitimate. You felt, you, you felt like Dream was glad to be actually be escaping, less known winning. Hell, that was a great fucking match. It made Tyler Bate look like a goddamn hero. Yeah. Yeah, it really did. And to your point, I think it did more for UK than anything. Yes, Dream looks dominant, but and you and NXT still reigning supreme, but UK might be right on their goddamn heels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Because even, really even while the match with Keith Lee and Adam Cole was going on and stuff, I was like, man, I would love to see Walter and Keith Lee. I mean, you got two great big men, and I and Keith Lee can actually wrestle. He's not just yeah. a big guy, you know. Uh, and that, you know how dude I can do moonsaults. Yeah, and you know how I feel about Walter. I, I'm not even. Yeah. I, yeah, and I said that after I seen him hit Travis Banks with some fucking double chops. Oh yeah. I was like, I wonder whose chop would hurt who the worst. <laughs> Like you I know, would, Tyler Bay pretty strong. I mean, uh, he, I mean that dude pretty strong. Who, uh, Walter? Yeah, Walt. Did you see what he did to do chess? Yes, man. Hell, I tweeted that shit. Uh, that dude is okay. for real. I quit. I, I mean, I quit the match. It was like, wait, you didn't let Walter go over. He went over. He went over my chest. I quit. <laughs> to be honest with you, I feel like that's what made him famous. Because you, if you go start looking up videos of him. Like that's a, that's a thing in his matches. Like the stadium or the arena, or wherever he's at, gets fucking hush quiet, and you just hear these gunshot chops. And I've said that too. I'm like, man, you only have to hit me with one of those. I I wouldn't just. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't have to do anything else. I'm finished. Cause I imagine being hit with five or six of those. Oh man, who can take it? Fucking make your chest bleed. Yeah, I like, hell no. Like that's worse than the Big Show shot. Uh, yeah, chop. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Exactly, exactly. But um, overall, that match, I gave it an A. A. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Um, the tournament as a whole, uh, B plus. Yeah, yeah. I'll go uh, with with just a. Be because you know you had some great matches and stuff at the same time, you know you kind of didn't know who you were seeing and why you were seeing right. them. Just kind of like oh, okay, oh group of matches, let's watch it. It it just was the beginning was so fucking slow. It yeah. it's like, come on, what the fuck? Yeah, no, it, no, it, they, it, it took a long time to pick right, it up. Right, 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 right. It, it picked up. Um, I mean. I would like to see something like this again. Um, I, I wonder, though, like, do you think this is going to be Vic Dream's way of getting to the main roster now? Or, I mean, what do you think? I, I think they have to. I mean, they have to. If they don't want to give him the NXT title, you're going to have to move him on up. And he's ready. He's primed. He's ready. He's earned his stripes. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, unless they unless get. they're grooming him to be the top guy at the uh, Alistair Lee, and maybe they call Chump up there too. Right. You I, know, unless they get him. If they, I'd be pissed if they fucking moved him up and he didn't win the championship. Yeah, that's not it's not fair. Yeah, no, nah, that that would be the same thing with Adam Cole. I think they both need a chance at it, you know, but. Yeah, it was different. I, again, I think this is more of a Triple H thing than anything. I, I'm, I, I, I seen the World Cup and I seen this, and I prefer Worlds Collide over the World Cup. That's just of me. course, any day, any day. Yeah, um, but again, this wasn't supposed to be a long episode. We just nope. kind of wanted to cover this, and you know, it was different. I, again, I liked the theme and the concepts. What I didn't, that was the pros. I like the fact that they got a lot of guys some FaceTime and people got familiar with some of these people or whatnot as far as NXT UK and, and stuff. And 
and and I like the I like the thought process behind it. Those were the pros for me. The cons were again, I just those are a lot of matches. And I know you say they stretch them out over two days, but uh, who's to say? I, I, that was I, that's my part. I didn't like the pace. I thought it would have been high from jump start to finish. It picked up at the end. The, the beginning was slow, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And I didn't like the fact that they didn't get anybody. I would have preferred to see Buddy, Buddy Murphy and Cedric Alexander in that tournament along with TJP as opposed to uh, Carrillo. You know, I don't know why they didn't try that. But those were my cons. It weren't many, but, you know, I, I'm hoping that the next time they do this, it's better. And yeah. if, it, if Triple H has his hands on it, it gets better. So, you know, that'll be something to watch. But it was different. I, I liked it. Yeah, it, it, it was. It was It was something good to look at. Well, we right. can some good. So, but, uh, folks, again, this was a quick episode for us, a quick turnaround. Um, this tournament was pretty short. We didn't have a lot of detail to really dive into as far as, you know, uh, storylines or anything else because it just was straight wrestling for the most part. Um, but we hope that you enjoyed it just as much as we did. And if you didn't, be sure to tell us why. Even if you did, tell us why. If we missed yeah. something. You know, we we love to hear from you, and please be sure to like and subscribe. I mean, we're, again, and, we yeah, and share, please yeah, share, please. And, and when um, you subscribe, hit that little bell right next to subscribe, so you can get the notification when we, every time we upload a video too. Right, right, and again, we appreciate all the love we've been getting, and uh, all the all the subscribers that have come and followers yes. on thing. So you know. We're going to keep doing this, and, you know, we just want to hear from you guys and, and, and give us your out, your opinions and thoughts and stuff like that. But Yeah, uh, even if you want to give us a topic to talk about sometimes, you know, we yeah, can. Yeah, definitely. We love that. Yeah, we could definitely do that. But, I mean, that's all we have today. And, again, keep listening, keep watching. Never know what we're going to come up with next. And this has been Sherrod and Keithan and the best damn wrestling, wrestling podcast. podcast. Damn right. Yeah. That's a wrap.